Welcome back, and in this video, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite parameters, and that is glow. Now, I need to start this off with a bit of a caveat, and that is that you should only ever really use glow for objects and materials that emit a tiny amount of light. The things like screens, UV tron suits, and objects that you kind of want to emit a small amount of light in the dark. So what it's not really meant to be used for is things like neon signs and light bulbs and that kind of classic motion graphics mystical glowing object within your scenes. So if you want to do something like that, you should really try and use a mesh light, which will be far more render efficient and you'll get a lot less fireflies and your image will be a lot quicker to render and also it'll feature a lot less noise. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get some glowing going. So glow is pretty simple. All it has is two parameters. The first is how bright you want it. And the second is the color or the texture you want it. So again, if I just take this up to one, you can see now that I'm emitting light from this teapot. And if I just come here and if I just turn the dome light down a little bit, or even off, you can now see that we're emitting white light from this teapot. I can go ahead here and I can emit any color I want to. And by default, this slider only ever wants to go up to one. So I turn it off by going under naught and then go all the way up to one. But you can go higher than one. And as Philippe Le Prince from Pixar says, if you go higher than one, then you're into the danger zone. But there are times when you really want to kind of push this so that your object and material does actually emit more glow. So if I go up to say 10, you can see now that I'm causing much more noise and much more fireflies, but my object now is really kind of glowing quite brightly. There's a bit of a balancing act here to try and find the right emission value where it's not going to cause your scene to absolutely be run over with fireflies and noise. So if I come down to two again, you can see that the noise has started to disappear. So let me show you one or two examples that you can do with glow. So if I just turn this off, I come here and put the dome light back on again. I'm just going to go ahead here and hide the teapot. Now the first example I'm going to show you is this clapperboard that I've created for the Pixar Studio scene. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually emitting light from these numbers. So if I go ahead here and I just show you the material, pretty simple. I've got this LED here and the gain is set to five, but I've got this Pixar blend that is plugged into this color parameter. And this is driven by the Pixar curvature. So if I show you this Pixar blend, what I've got is I've got two colors. I've got a lighter red and I've got a darker red. And then here in the Pixar curvature, I'm using this mask. And if I just draw a render region around it, it'll speed up a bit. So what I'm doing is I'm using this black and white mask that the Pixar curvature creates to basically make the middle of my numbers brighter and then the edges I want to be darker. And then that is controlled by here. So to demonstrate this, if I just increase the brightness of my bottom color, you can see here that the middle of my numbers is getting whiter. And this sort of brighter middle and darker on the edge of objects is kind of quite common in things like neons and other glowing objects that you get in the real world. Okay, so let's move on to the next example. Just hide the clapperboard. And now I've got this TV that I've created. And just by having a look at the hypershade, you can see again, it's pretty simple. I've got this TV screen and I've set the gain here to one and then into the color. All I've done is I've gone ahead and I've basically input this TV texture here, which you can see on the screen. And this is a really simple example of how you can drive your glow with textures. So again, if I come here and I turn the light down, even 0.1 and I come here and then I just really pump up this glowing TV. You can now start to see that we've started to emit light out of the TV. And like I say, you know, 15 is probably quite high in this case. We only really want a small amount of light basically just to emit from this object. And what we'll do in a future lesson is we'll come back to this scene and I'll show you how you can use a rectangular light, apply this same texture to it, and then we're really going to blast some light out of it and create this really impressive glowing TV inside a volumetric dark room. 
So I hope this has been useful for the glow. And like I say, just be careful with this gain number because you can really increase your render times and noise with this. So just be careful of it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.